Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. Thank you to all our loyal listeners. I hope you're getting value from the show each and every day. In celebration of a quarter million downloads, we're doing a giveaway of Robert Kiyosaki's brand new book called Fake. It came out on Monday of last week, and if you'd like to win a copy, send an email to contest at victorjm.com. That's contest at victorjm.com. Put the number 250,000 in the subject line. We'll be holding the draw this coming Saturday, April the 20th. On today's show, we're talking about a strategy for creating value in some expensive markets. In some of the most expensive cities in North America, cities are increasingly charging development fees or impact fees for new construction. These fees pay for new roads, the cost of expanding water, sewer, and public transit infrastructure. The rationale is that urban expansion costs money long before the new properties are completed and contributing to the expanded property tax base. So development charges levied against the developers make sure that the cost of these expansions are covered by those who stand to profit the most from the growth. In these expensive markets, it can sometimes be difficult to make the numbers work for new construction. When you add the cost of development charges, a new home can be extremely expensive compared with the resale price of existing homes in the market. This is particularly true for the smaller player who doesn't have the economies of scale of a larger builder. Methods to make money in these market conditions requires a little more creativity than a simple flip or a simple new home construction. The first strategy is to increase the density with accessory dwelling units, sometimes called an in-law suite. It could be a basement apartment, sometimes a carriage house if your local zoning allows for a separate building on the property that takes its utilities from the main house. But remember, Development charges only apply to an increase in density. So if the property is a single-family home on it and the finished product is still a single-family home, then no development charges apply. You have not increased the density. Even an accessory dwelling unit does not constitute, in most cases, an increase in density. Of course, check with your local zoning to make sure you're applying the rules correctly. Some single-story ranch bungalows simply don't have the flexibility to be transformed into a modern home that the market would really embrace. In those cases, a pure flip transaction doesn't make sense. Many investors consider a complete teardown and rebuild if the existing home is functionally obsolete. Well, there's a middle ground solution that can sometimes save an awful lot of money and still deliver a new home. That is the so-called pop top. This is where you cut off the roof, demolish the interior, utilize the existing foundation and footprint of the home as the basis for a brand new two-story home. You get to reuse the foundation, which saves about forty to $50,000 off the cost of construction. You also reuse the utilities coming to the home, save about twenty to $30,000 in utility servicing costs compared with new construction. And you get to reuse the structure on the ground floor. The savings can be pretty substantial. Now, the ground floor layout is going to be completely redesigned. You create some large open spaces that are consistent with the new home of today's vintage. The structural supporting walls, the columns and beams for the upper levels can be easily incorporated at this point. And the second level will house the bedrooms and the bathrooms that you would expect to have in a two-story home. The purchase price of the home is based on the value of the existing home. And some older single-story homes in, for example, Toronto can be purchased well below the median sales price. These homes can be purchased sometimes for six, seven hundred thousand dollars. After reconstruction, as a two-story home, they can often command prices in the range of 1.2 to 1.3 million. And when you factor in the cost of construction of, say, 350,000, there's a pretty sizable profit margin of a couple hundred thousand dollars in that property. On a percentage basis, I find these margins to be a little bit thin, but I know a number of home builders that have elected to use this approach. It's got the advantage of being classified as a renovation, and therefore it's exempt from being required to offer the new 10-year home warranty program. Since there's no increase in density compared to what was there before, there's no development charges. The additional savings from reusing the foundation and the structure from the ground floor add to the savings compared with new construction. This approach enables a small builder to create a new product that is price competitive with the new construction of a major home builder and still offers a healthy profit margin. Small builders simply don't have the purchasing power of a major home builder, and so they struggle to be competitive in a direct head-to-head competition. The major home builders generally don't go after these smaller projects. They want to do a complete subdivision. So these smaller projects can offer better than average profits by leveraging the savings of the existing infrastructure. As you're thinking about that, maybe consider doing a pop-top project. Have an awesome rest of your day. 
Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.